October 29th Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible 1 Peter chapter 3 from the New Testament In the same way, wives, be subject to your own husbands. Then, even if some are disobedient to the word, they will be won over without a word by the way you live when they see your pure and reverent conduct. Let your beauty not be external, the braiding of hair and wearing of gold jewelry or fine clothes, but the inner person of the heart, the lasting beauty of a gentle and tranquil spirit, which is precious in God's sight. For in the same way the holy women who hoped in God long ago adorned themselves by being subject to their husbands, like Sarah who obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord. You became her children when you do what is good and have no fear in doing so. Husbands, in the same way, treat your wives with consideration as the weaker partners and show them honor as fellow heirs of the grace of life. In this way, nothing will hinder your prayers. Finally, all of you be harmonious, sympathetic, affectionate, compassionate, and humble. Do not return evil for evil or insult for insult. But instead, bless others because you are called to inherit a blessing. For the one who wants to love life and see good days must keep his tongue from evil and his lips from uttering deceit. And he must turn away from evil and do good. He must seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open to their prayer. But the Lord's face is against those who do evil. For who is going to harm you if you are devoted to what is good? But in fact, if you happen to suffer for doing what is right, you are blessed. But do not be terrified of them or be shaken. But set Christ apart as Lord in your hearts and always be ready to give an answer to anyone who asks about the hope you possess. Yet do it with courtesy and respect, keeping a good conscience so that those who slander your good conduct in Christ may be put to shame when they accuse you. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if God wills it, than for doing evil. Because Christ also suffered once for sins, the just for the unjust, to bring you to God by being put to death in the flesh, but by being made alive in the Spirit. In it he went and preached to the spirits in prison. After they were disobedient long ago when God patiently waited in the days of Noah as an ark was being constructed. In the ark a few, that is eight souls, were delivered through water. And this prefigured baptism which now saves you, not the washing off of physical dirt but the pledge of a good conscience to God through the resurrection of Jesus Christ who went into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels and authorities and powers subject to him. God, I'm not sure if you have planned for me in the future, a husband or not. Um, whatever your will is for my life, it will be awesome. But I, I love this part of a relationship. And it's kind of funny because most people tease me about this, being a Christian girl and being very independent and strong-willed and, and smart and running her own business and... They're like, how in the world is a guy ever going to handle you? Well, that's not how it works. Uh, and one of the things I found that even though I'm not married, this is something that I constantly work on and practice. So if I do get married, it will be there in the marriage. But I think this is also good behavior for, <laughs> for Christian women in general. That, uh, And maybe for Christian guys too. Uh, arguing and fighting against someone who's not Christian, fussing at them, uh, telling them what they believe is wrong, um, showing any side that isn't godly in the pursuit to get somebody else to become Christian isn't going to help in any way. It's probably only going to push them away further. Now, thankfully, we, thankfully we know that you're in charge, God, of their salvation uh, and the timing having to do with that. But we also know that you put us here on earth to do a lot of things. And one of those things is to reflect your qualities in our life. And so I don't even need to be married to do that. Um, I can 
be quiet, be gentle, uh, have a tranquil spirit. I can still be independent and smart and run my own business, uh, but I can still do all of this with uh, this inner strength that obviously comes from you. Uh, I hope that people know that when I live my life and how I live my life, it would be the greatest honor ever for them to say she lives her life for God. Um, she is that way because of God. I would love for it to be nothing about me. So even though many of us listening to this video, God may not be married, and some of us may even be men and not married, I think these are our words of wisdom that we can always live out. Not just that we happen to be in a marriage where where we are Christian and our husbands or significant others aren't and how we have to respond to them or not respond to them. But I think in our day in and day out life, uh, that gentleness uh, will showcase who you truly are, God, in the facets of who you are in your grace and your mercy a lot better than somebody who's antagonistic and loud and demeaning and belligerent and argumentative. Again, God, I don't know if you have marriage in mind for me, but if that happens to me or anybody else that's listening to this video, God, I just pray that wives understand that just like you say in Galatians, that we are equal, that men and women are created equal in your eyes. We're more equal in your eyes than we are here on earth uh, by far. And so being called the so-called weaker sex is not how the world means it when you talk about it in the Bible. Uh, it simply means, especially with Peter, since he was uh, speaking about women and slaves and other people who were in subordinate positions, especially at that time, that women were weaker and, and physically still are for the most part, and that the husbands weren't to take advantage of that, especially by beating a wife into submission. But God, I just pray for everyone listening today that they understand that <laughs> whether you decide that they are to be married or not, that first and foremost, above all priorities, including a relationship with somebody for the rest of their life, that you need to be that first priority. That you, my Lord, my Savior, need to come above and beyond a relationship, children, jobs, labels, titles, financials, entertainment, free time. God, I, I love this time that we get to spend together as a single person. And if it continues for the rest of my life, that would be fine too, because I get to selfishly keep you all to myself in my life. My, as the Bible talks about, my attentions aren't diluted by a husband, by children, uh, by all these other things, uh, that my focus is on you. And I absolutely love that. But I also know in practicing some of the things that you talk about for marriage, that they're also really good to practice, even if you're single and possibly getting married, or even if you're going to be single for the rest of your life, that gentleness, kindness, tranquility, can definitely reflect your glory a lot better than being antagonistic in various situations. God, I thank you for these facets that you've put in me. These are all bits and pieces of you that reside in me, and I love that you allow those to be reflected in my life. In your son's name I pray, amen.